We talk about elite quarterbacks in the NFL. Sometimes we forget to include Joe Burrow. Well, those days are done. Patrick Mahomes is wonderful. Josh Allen has been great. Uh, but Joe Burrow belongs in that conversation. And if you're looking at top three quarterbacks, maybe top two, it's Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow. They get to cross paths coming up next weekend. And when you go back to what Joe Burrow has done, his last three healthy seasons, he had the knee surgery when he got to the Bengals. But his last year at LSU, that's one of the greatest seasons a college quarterback has ever turned in. Then he goes to the Bengals. And what he's done the last two years, he went to the Super Bowl last year and was a sack away from maybe completing a pass to Jamar Chase, and they would have won the Super Bowl. And here he is again on the road, goes to Buffalo. Now he goes to Kansas City. They've beaten Patrick Mahomes, and now you get your opportunity again. And, you know, this wasn't one of those, well, team effort, Joe Burrow. It started with Joe Burrow. Set the tone as 14 nothing quickly. And we thought maybe it's going to be a shootout. But give credit to a balanced Cincinnati team. You have Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, Joe Mixon, good running. Uh, I was worried about the offensive line. Said that going in. Uh, that you're missing three starters on the offensive line. And I thought that could be the difference here. He was sacked one time. But a lot of it, it is of, of what he does when he moves the pocket. He's very, very quick at getting the ball out. He did what he needed to do. Can he do that against Kansas City? Well, he's going to have to. It won't be as easy because Buffalo, Buffalo was not the better team. Uh, Cincinnati proved that. That wasn't a fluke. Cincinnati was by far a better team there. But Joe Burrow, what you see, I mean, you love his confidence. I go back to the interview I did at the Miami Super Bowl when he joined us on set. And I said, you know, where's the confidence come from? And he goes, being prepared. I mean, that's the smart answer. If you are prepared, you should be confident. Com you know, cocky. Here's Joe Burrow after the win in Buffalo. So uh, I felt feels like football in December. I guess it's January now, almost February. That was fun. And the first two drives look like the first two drives back on January 7th. Well, the snow, snow doesn't affect the ball too much. It gets a little wet every now and then, but it's not like rain or wind or anything like that. So uh, we're confident in just about any weather there is. You just get the feeling that this is just another homework assignment. No big deal. You go to Buffalo, play in the snow. You feel like you should have been hosting that game. DeMar Hamlin is in the building. You feel like all the emotion, the sentiment is on their side. The story is not the Bengals. It's the Buffalo Bills. From the beginning, they were the team going to win the Super Bowl. Bengals start out 0-2. Offensive line doesn't look good, even though they concentrated on making the offensive line better. Nobody had the Bengals going back to the Super Bowl. And here they are on the doorstep of going back to the Super Bowl. You got Patrick Mahomes with the high ankle sprain. And, and that is a big deal because he did come back in. Uh, but, uh, you know, as you move forward the next couple of days, that's what I'm curious about because this is something that stays with you. It can actually get worse. When you play in the moment before the swelling, adrenaline takes over, get it shot up, all of those things, you can play in the moment. But anybody who's had a high ankle sprain will tell you it's sometimes after the fact where it gets worse. And I don't know what kind of condition he'll be in by next Sunday, but the Bengals will definitely be testing Patrick Mahomes. But if you said Mahomes has to be a pocket passer, he's still a great pocket passer. It's He has an ability to extend a play, use his legs, like Burrow does. You know, they, they're not known as runners, but they can and they can extend a play. And that makes Mahomes so much more valuable. And then you have the Cowboys who uh, had a chance. They had a chance. And it was a slugfest. They had a chance to go up. Uh, they lose Pollard, which was a huge loss. Uh, Dak Prescott did not look good. Threw two picks. Should have thrown a pick six at the end of the game there as well. And here's Jerry Jones back where he started. You would know how proud I am of these guys in here. Uh, that's a good team. We, uh, uh, frankly, 
uh, turnovers do settle the scores with games like that. And uh, I'm so disappointed for our fans. And uh, we've got uh, uh, a locker room full of sick players and coaches to go along with the literally hundreds of thousands of Cowboy fans that are old that are sick. Wow. You can hear it in his voice that he is so desperate for this. And, and he's 80 years of age. It's been 30 years since they've done something. And he thought he had his team. He had his defense. You paid Dak all that money. You got one great running back. You got another good running back. C.D. Lamb, you're facing a third-string uh, quarterback there, but on the road. And the Niners did what they needed to do. It wasn't pretty. But that defense did a great job on uh, Dak Prescott. And as you move forward with the Cowboys, Jerry Jones says Mike McCarthy's safe. Uh, Okay. And he's been loyal to his coaches, sometimes to a fault. But watching that with, you know, the Cowboys, they had their opportunities there. Because the Niners didn't play great. Brock Purdy didn't play great. But Dallas couldn't come up with a big play when they needed to. All right, uh, we'll get to phone calls, best and worst of the weekend. Got a poll question there, Seton, you're going to unveil? Yeah, yeah, this is uh, something we like to do on Mondays, but we're going to do a dude poll question. Dude. Dude. Uh, Dak Prescott's game versus the 49ers. You were just talking Mm. about it, but dude. What happened? Yeah. (laughs) What happened? The Niners, by the way, two and a half point underdogs against the Eagles. The Bengals, they're getting one they're getting one point against the Chiefs. Pretty good. Started as three, bet it down to one. Who else is on the poll? Uh, Giants. They no showed. That was unfortunate. Yeah. I kind of feel like I got duped. Yeah. I did you know too. what I mean? Like yeah. I kind of like, damn it, I fell for it. Yeah, I, I really too. thought Danny Dimes was gonna show up. And yeah. Why did I believe that? Counterfeit. Dang. Yeah. Now I'm duped. I'm watching and I'm going, okay, this this is gonna be interesting. And I thought, okay. I mean, they played him twice. They know who they are. They're, there's momentum here. They can run the ball. Danny Dimes going to get out in space. Uh, the line will put some pressure there. And then all of a sudden it was like, uh, uh, that's over. That didn't take long. Who else is on there, Seton? Uh, well, let's see. The uh, Bills didn't show up at home, no, really. They did not. That was unfortunate end to that story. Your Super Bowl favorites, they gifted you a home game. Here is Josh Allen after the loss. You, you play to win. Our goal is to win a, a Super Bowl, a world championship, and we didn't accomplish that. So everything that happened this season is kind of null and void in our minds, and it sucks. He was choppy last week against the Dolphins, but we sort of brushed that aside because they got the win. He did not look good at all yesterday in comparison with uh, Joe Burrow. What else? You- I'm not trying to pick on the Cowboys, but... <laughs> Uh, it's possible we have to add another option there because that formation at the end of the game Ooh. was hilarious. <laughs> okay, I I didn't know what happened. I see Zeke Elliott and I, I go, wait, he's he's going to be the center? He's the long snapper? And then the Niners, whoever took a run at him, just blew him up. And I went, well, you know that when they practice that, whoever was on the other side on the Dallas defense didn't blow up his teammate. <laughs> All of a sudden, <laughs> Zeke snaps the ball and boom. Trucked. It's like he exploded right in front of us. <laughs> and then they completed the pass. Jimmy Ward, you know, blew him up. And then it, that was the ball game. So the last two years, your season comes down to a final play. They don't get the playoff last year. And then they get this play. I, I would have preferred they didn't get that playoff right. as bad as it was. <laughs> What the heck was that? And especially because they they came out in that formation and the 49ers call a timeout. They're like, hold up, let's just look at this real quick. Yeah. And then they came back out and it, gosh, was that, you're like, whoa, what's going to happen? This is like exotic. What are they going to do? <laughs> oh, <laughs> turns out nothing. <laughs> it was hilarious. Oh my God. What a way to end the game. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, that was funny. And then I think Mike McCarthy said, we didn't run the play we were supposed to. I don't know what the play was. But it had to be a variation of what they ran if Zeke is going to be your long snap. <laughs> so they were going to – Zeke was going to snap it, then they were going to throw it to Zeke, and then Zeke was going to do laterals or something? Yeah, Paul. So Greg Olson explained it real well. Uh, Zeke was eligible to run downfield. He couldn't catch the pass, but he had been eligible to catch the oh. pitches. 
Oh, okay. So he would have been a, another threatening player on the field instead mm. of a center. Mm. Didn't work out that way. No, it did not. Anybody else on that list, Seaton? Uh, on the negative ones, no. I mean, we could add anybody that you'd like, but that's what we've got so far. Dude. Yeah, dude. Dude. Um, if we were doing a positive dude poll question, though, Nick Bosa. Man, that dude is no joke. I would love to know how many false start penalties he's caused this season. Because it seems like at every, the start of every single game, whoever that like left tackle is or whoever's lined up against him jumps early every single time. And you try to simulate something like that. It's always when you're when you're getting ready to face an opponent, you'd be like, "All right, you're going to be that guy," and then we're going to, you know, simulate how quick. Well, the only guy who can have that speed is, is probably Micah Parsons. So Micah Parsons would have to be Joey Bosa in practice, and I mean, or Nick Bosa. Get those guys mixed up. Yes, Paul. Micah Parsons got a rush. I think it's Mike McGlinchey, the tackle for the 49ers. Now, McGlinchey got the win and then nice day. But he kind of got under his armpit and lifted him sideways. And there's this picture. (laughs) It looks like he's picking him up and, like, delivering a package. You know, it just (laughs) does not look good. Last time I saw that was Reggie White. I think that was (laughs) in the Super Bowl against uh, the Patriots. Like, he lifted somebody up or trucked them. But... Uh, the Cowboys, disappointment. Bills, disappointment. If I'm a Jags fan, I feel pretty good today. You know, you went toe-to-toe. Um, you know, you got a lot of momentum going into next season. And and this is what it comes down to. you got to have the coach and you got to have the quarterback. Well, they had the quarterback. They didn't have the coach. And Doug Peterson did a wonderful job with that team this year. You know, cleaning up the mess, uh, what was left behind with Urban Meyer – and then getting Trevor Lawrence to play like a number one overall pick should play. And I thought that that was, that was a, a, one of those moments that it could have gotten out of hand. Like you didn't, I didn't want the Jags to get blown out because they had been a really good story. And then all of a sudden you realize that they're not going away. Mahomes gets hurt. Who knew Chad Henney was still in the NFL? He came in, 98-yard drive, and it always helps when you go, okay, if I get in trouble, who can I throw? Oh, Travis Kelsey. Sorry. Travis Kelsey. I think the Jags had one of the worst defenses against tight ends this year. <laughs> and boy, they, they proved that stat was correct. He had 14 catches. And you know he's getting it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, like there are certain guys where they're open and you go, okay. It feels like we're still surprised Travis Kelsey is so open. It's like, man. Who's covering it? Well, nobody is. But he looked great. You know? And that's such a weapon to have. 